Hello and welcome back to the uh, geometry videos. This is a video over section two and this is a video about uh, special right triangles and what we're going to talk about today is kind of the foundation of of the of this whole unit. So this is very foundational, okay, so this is very foundational um, uh, for trigonometry, okay, it leads into trigonometry and then it also um, helps with ACT and SAT stuff. Okay, you will see these things on ACT and the SAT. All right. So um, let's go ahead and talk about quickly. Uh, we're talking about special right triangles. Okay. Uh, we have two types. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of discuss what those are. Uh, ways for you to, uh, you know, find lengths of triangles knowing that they are a 45 or 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the first thing I want to talk about is what exactly a 45, 45, 90 triangle is. Okay. And so what it says is that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle and how I get that name is because of the angle measures. Okay. So I have a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. Okay. And, um, and, and this is also an isosceles triangle, okay? So it's an isosceles triangle. So the other thing I know is that my legs here are going to be congruent, all right? And so what I do is I call the length, um, I don't use X, I use the length L on these. And so I'll, if I call that length L and that length L, then what I know is that the hypotenuse is square root is the square root of 2 times as long as each leg, okay? So if I know that my that these legs of my right triangle, okay, here are my legs, here's my hypotenuse, I know that my hypotenuse is L times the square root of 2, okay? So what I want to do is use that idea over here, okay, um, and kind of show you what I mean by that. So, um, if I were to go over here and I have these three triangles and it says find the missing side to each triangle, use the Pythagorean theorem and then simplify your answer. So I'm going to look at this triangle first. Okay, I know it's a little bit blurry. Uh, this is from an old book uh, or my old notes from my old school. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that, okay, I know that these two sides are congruent. Okay, and it's a right triangle, okay, uh, because of my right angle here. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for my hypotenuse. So if I take 3 squared plus 3 squared is equal to x squared, all right? And if I were to solve this, I would get 9 plus 9 is equal to x squared, okay? And then 9 plus 9 is 18, so I get 18 is equal to x squared. And if I take the square root of x, or square root of both sides, um, what I end up getting is that I get x is equal to the square root of 18, okay? Now, what I would do to simplify this is I could split the square root of 18 up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Okay, and this is all equal to x. Now, I could take the square root of 9, okay, and that gives me 3. So x is equal to 3. I cannot take the square root of 2. I have to leave it as the square root of 2, and so I get 3 times the square root of 2, all right? And so uh, if I were to, you know, come up here and say, all right, well, this is a length of 3 times the square root of 2, okay? And so what you'll notice is that it follows the same pattern up here, okay? That my legs had a length of 3, okay? And then my hypotenuse is just that length, uh, that leg length, 3, times the square root of 2, okay? And so let's do that with another one, okay? And so let's do it with this one. Uh, same thing, I know that these are Sides are congruent. They're 8 and 8. I have a right triangle. So let me do 8 squared plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. Okay. Uh, 8 squared is going to give me 64. Plus 64 is equal to x squared. 64 plus 64 is 128, which is equal to x squared. Okay. And then um, what I've got then if I took the square root of both sides to solve for x... I end up getting that x is equal to the square root of 128. All right. Now, to simplify this, um, I know that the perfect square 64 goes into 128. Okay, so I could separate this out and say x is equal to the square root 
of 64 times the square root of 2. 2 times 64 gives me 128. Okay, if I simplify the square root of 64, that's just going to give me 8. So I've got x is equal to 8 times the square root of 2, and that's it. Okay, and we're done. So therefore, um, you know, my length for x is equal to 8 times the square root of 2. Okay, maybe you're seeing that again. That, you know, given this, this is length L, L, the hypotenuse is L times the square root of 2. Same thing over here. This length is 8. This length is 8. My hypotenuse is 8 times the square root of 2. Okay? And both of these triangles are 45, 45, 90 triangles. If you have an isosceles right triangle, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay? So the last one uh, with 5 and 5, um, and so let me change up colors. Let me do orange. And so I know that these are congruent. So I'm going to do 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to x squared. Okay, 5 squared is 25 plus 25, and that's equal to x squared. So add these two together. You're going to get 50, and that's equal to x squared. So if I take the square root of both sides, all right, and solve for x, I end up getting that x is equal to the square root of 50. Okay, well, if I simplify this, then, you know, I can split this up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Okay, and so the square root of 25 is just going to give me 5, and then multiply it by the square root of 2. Okay, and so that's what this value for x is. x is equal to 5 times the square root of 2. All right, and so, and that's it. All right, but, you know, it, it's easy to do this. You can always do Pythagorean theorem, but if you know this, all right, then it's easy to fill out. So, like, you know, just for example, you know, let's just come up with something over here, and I'm just going to say, all right, let's uh, find the missing length. Let's do um, a right triangle here, and let's say that this right triangle has a length of, say, 4. Okay, and this is also 4. All right, so then what I know is that, you know, just because this is 4 and this is 4, I have an isosceles right triangle. It tells me that this is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. Then I automatically know that my hypotenuse is going to be 4 times the square root of 2. And that's it. And I've solved for that right triangle. Okay, so not too bad. But, uh, you know, I, I could just show you this. But it helps when you see it being done by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's kind of extend this out a little bit. Uh, and it says that, and we've already done this one, okay? We've already just done this on the last page. It says, what is the length of the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle with legs that are 8 centimeters long? Now, the first thing is, is when you look at this, you go, okay, how do I know that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle? You have to look at these lengths. And because these lengths are congruent, they're both 8, okay? I come in here and say that they're congruent. Okay, in an isosceles triangle, when I have this two legs are congruent, I know that my base angles are congruent, okay? And in a right triangle, okay, if you have an isosceles right triangle, these other angles, the non-right angle, are always going to be 45 degrees, okay? Always, okay? And that's just the case. So now what I know, and I, and I normally do this, I write in that this is going to be L and this is L, and this is L times the square root of 2. I usually just write that in there. And so I write this, okay? Usually, you know, depending on who you are, you know, it's pretty easy to figure this out. But I know that L is equal to 8, okay? And I know that C, my length that we're trying to find, is equal to L times the square root of 2, okay? And every time I have a right triangle, I draw this picture, all right? And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to substitute this value for 8 into L of my other equation here, all right? So this is a little bit of algebra, and this is a technique that will always work. So now what I know is that C is equal to 8 times the square root of 2, okay? Now, guys, I didn't do anything different than the previous page, okay? I just set up a couple equations and, and showed you, you know, a way of doing that. If you automatically know what to do and you see that this is 8 and this is 8, then automatically just write in that this is 8 times the square root of 2. Okay, but sometimes that's not the case, okay? Sometimes you're given something like this, and you know that, um, you know, you're given a right triangle here, but you're given the hypotenuse, and you're being asked to find the legs, okay? So this one's a little bit different. This is going to be the challenge, and this is one that you really want to make sure you write down the notes on this one, 
Okay, so what I notice is that this is a 45-45-90 triangle. The reason I know that is because that this length is A and this length is A. So it's because they're named the same thing, and you know I can just come in here and say that these two are congruent. If I have a right triangle with two congruent legs, then I know that these base angles are also congruent, and they're 45 degrees. Okay, So when you notice that, and that's just something you got to notice, all right. Um, so then what I do is I say, okay, I've got that this length is L, this length is L, and this length is L times the square root of 2. Okay, so then what I do is I set up a series of equations. All right, I'm going to set up that A is equal to L, okay, just based off of this. All right, and then I'm going to set up the equation L times the square root of 2. L times the square root of 2 is equal to 14. Okay? And so now what I can what I'm what I want to do now is I want to solve for L. In this equation here, I can solve this for L in which I can substitute L back up here and figure out what my what A is, my side length. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. Okay? Divide by the square root of 2. All right? So then these divide out and I get that L is equal to 14 divided by the square root of 2. Now, now one thing I don't want to do is leave my answer like this. Okay, this isn't good. What we want to do is we want to rationalize the denominator. So when I have a square root in my denominator, it's, we, don't, we don't like to have those in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2. And as a result, what happens is, is I get that L is equal to 14... Okay, times the square root of 2 divided by, and if I take the square root of 2 and multiply it by itself, if I square the square root of 2, I'm going to get 2. Okay, and so then what I can do is I can simplify this and I can say, all right, well, if I take 14 over 2, that's really 7 over 1. So then I know that L is equal to 7 times the square root of 2, and that is my side length, L, and I'm going to plug that in for A. So then I know, all right, that A is equal to 7 times the square root of 2. Okay, rule of thumb on these, okay, with something like this, all right, rule of thumb. Let me write this over here, rule of thumb. Okay, take hypotenuse, hypotenuse, and divide it by 2. And divide by 2. And then multiply by the square root of 2. Okay, and that'll happen every time. Okay, that's kind of the rule of thumb. However, you know, if you want to make sure you're doing it right, do the math. Okay, not too hard. So, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, now on a 30, 60, 90... Okay, and I just know that if I have a um, like a right angle here, and if either of these angles is 30 degrees or 60 degrees, then you know I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, what I know is that the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg. Okay, so here's my shorter leg. Okay, I know that the hypotenuse is twice as long. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to call the shorter leg S. I'm going to call my hypotenuse. 2s is twice as long, and then I know that the longer leg is square root of 3 times as long as the shorter leg. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to say that this is really just s times the square root of 3. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I want to do kind of the same thing we did using Pythagorean theorem to figure out uh, what these values for x are in these various equations, okay? Now, it'll follow the same thing that we see here. Okay, the same type of pattern. And what I want you to notice here is that in this first triangle, what I notice is that I have, you know, my shorter leg is 3, and my hypotenuse is double that shorter length. Okay, now I'm going to call this A, B, and C. And I'm using Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to say that I've got 3 squared plus x squared is equal to 6 squared. Okay, and so this gives me 9 plus x squared is equal to 36. All right, if I subtract 9 from both sides, 
all right, then I get that x squared is equal to 27, all right? And then what I've got, if I take the square root of both sides, okay, I get that x is equal to the square root of 27. Now, when I simplify this, I notice that I can factor out a 9 from 27, and 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals, and this is going to be um, the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Okay, and so then I can evaluate the square root of 9, and that gives me that x is equal to 3 times the square root of 3. All right, and that's it. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I know that x up here is equal to 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, and that's that third side. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing over here for this one. Okay, uh, I'm going to call this... A, call this B, call this C. Okay, using Pythagorean theorem, I can then say that I've got 5 squared plus x squared is equal to 10 squared. All right, so now, all right, I've got 25 plus x squared is equal to 100. All right, so I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides, and then I get that x squared is equal to 75. Okay, now to solve for x, I need to apply the square root. So if I take the square root of both sides, all right, I end up getting that x is equal to uh, just the square root of 75. Okay, well, let's simplify that. And I'm trying to think of a perfect square that, I can, that divides into 75, and that number is 25. So I've got this. I've got x is equal to, I'm going to split this up. I've got the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Okay, and I can evaluate square root of 25 is 5. So I get that x is equal to 5 times the square root of 3. All right? So I've got that. All right, so up here I know that this value for x is equal to 5 times the square root of 3. All right, so maybe you're seeing a pattern here, okay? And so now let's go to this other one, okay? Uh, from this one, uh, I've got 2, x, and 4. I'm going to bet you that x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3, okay? Just because that's what the pattern says. So let's do this, all right? So this is, let's have this be a, have this be b, and this is c. So using Pythagorean theorem, I know that I've got 2 squared plus x squared is equal to 4 squared. So 2 squared is 4 plus x squared is equal to 16. So now I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So then I get that x squared is equal to 12, all right? And if I take the square root of that, all right, then I've got that x is equal to, all right, well, how do, okay, it's equal to the square root of 12. Let me think about a number that goes into 12 that's a perfect square, and that number's 4, okay? So if I take x is equal to, and we split this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Now, the square root of 4, that's just 2. So I get x is equal to 2 times the square root of 3. Oh, look, what did I say? What did I say? I told you it was going to be 2 square root of 3. Well, but that's the thing. You know, that's the pattern. Okay? So what I notice here is that, you know, the shortest length is your value for s. Okay? All right? And that was the same here. Okay? And then the hypotenuse in each of these was double that length. So if I took 2 times 2, I got 4. If I took 5 times 2, I got 10. If I took 3 times 2, I got 6. Then to get this third length, okay, this other leg here... You take the shorter length, and you multiply it by the square root of 3, okay? You took the shorter length here, which is 5, multiplied it by the square root of 3. You took the shorter length here, which is 3, multiplied it by the square root of 3, okay? And that's that. All right, now let's look at some application problems. All right, so what I do, uh, you know, what we're asked to do is we're asked to find the other uh, sides of this triangle, okay? Now, what I know is that, you know, I have a right triangle, and this is 60 degrees, that means that the other length here has to be 30 degrees. Okay, so that's 30 degrees. Now, what I have is I have those relationships. Okay, now I, I'm going to take, I'm going to write those out. All right, and every time I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I write out those relationships. So I know that my shortest side, I'm going to call that length S. Okay, and then I'm going to call my hypotenuse double length S. So I'm going to take that and multiply it by 2. So I've got 2S. Okay, and then I'm going to take my third side, which is my shorter length, and call it s times the square root of 3. Okay, so once I figure out what s is, 
I can find out this length and I can find out that length. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, an equation. Okay. And that equation is setting this value of 80 equal to s times the square root of 3. So when I do that, okay, I'm just going to do s times the square root of 3 and set that equal to 80. All right. Now I'm going to solve for s. So I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. Okay, and divide that by the square root of 3. So those divide out. So I get that s is equal to 80 divided by the square root of 3. Okay, then I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3 to rationalize my denominator. All right? So now what I have is I get that s is equal to 80 times the square root of 3 all divided by 3. Okay, and the reason why is because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives me 3. So now this is my value for s, okay? And so, and the problem is, is that I can't simplify 80 over 3, okay? I just leave it like that. Okay, so that's that value. So the value of gh, okay, and I'm going to write this up over here, that gh, that line segment, is equal to 80 times the square root of 3 all over 3, and that's it. Okay, now to find the other length, jh, okay, then I'm going to take this length s and multiply it by 2, okay, which is what I had here. So I take whatever value I had for s and multiply it by 2. So jh is going to be 2, let me do this, 2 over 1 times um, 80 times the square root of 3 all over 3, okay. And so what I do is I just multiply across, all right? So I take JH, and I end up getting that this is going to be 160 times the square root of 3 all over 3, and that's it, okay? So that's what I'm doing, okay? So it's a little bit trickier, you know, and it's all about guys setting up this equation and rationalizing the denominator, okay? So if you go back through, if, you, if this doesn't make any sense, go back through and rewatch this part, okay? All right, um, let's do, all right, let's just finish this out, okay? We've got a couple of application problems, okay? And on the first one, it says a salt burn is used by a highway maintenance company to store road salt for use during freezing weather, okay? The barn is in the shape of a triangular prism, okay, with an equilateral triangle as its front face. The distance from the peak of the barn to the ground along the roof line is 30 feet, okay? How tall is the barn? Okay, so what you have here, and let me draw a picture. This is kind of tricky. Okay, you have a rectangular, or I'm sorry, a triangular prism here. All right, so you have a triangle, and it's kind of like one of those tent things, all right, where it goes like this. Okay, and here's your door. Now, it says the distance from the peak of the barn to the ground along the roof line. So this value right here is 30 feet. Okay, so that's 30 feet. All right, now what, it, what it's asking us to do, it's asking us to find what this length is here, okay, what the height of that barn is. All right, now what I do, if I do that, I draw a right triangle here. I already know that this angle is 60 degrees. That means that this is 30 degrees, okay? So that means what I have is that relationship where this is S, this length from here to here is S, this is 2S, and this is s times the square root of 3, okay? So if I wanted to figure out what s is, I can set up an equation, okay, using these two numbers, okay? I can set 2s equal to 30. And if I divide both sides by 2, then I get that s is equal to 15, okay? And that's what I've got. Now my height, okay, the height of this barn is equal to s times the square root of 3, all right, so now that I know what S is, I know that S is 15. I'm going to plug that in here for S. So I get that H is equal to 15 times the square root of 3. Okay, and we'll call this feet. And that's it. All right, and it may have you evaluate that in the calculator, but you just plug that into the calculator and you rock and roll. All right. Okay, let's take another look at another problem. It says Amari is standing 50 feet away from the base of the building, from where he stands. The angle formed between the top of the building and the ground at his feet is 60 degrees, okay? How tall is the building? So what's this height right here? So I'm going to call this H, all right? Now, what I know is that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? 
and my shorter leg, we're going to call that length S. Okay? So off the bat, I know that S is equal to 50 feet. Okay? Then this other longer side here is 2S, and this third side is S times the square root of 3. Okay? So knowing that H is equal to S times the square root of 3, then all I do is take 50, plug it in for S, and we rock and roll. All right, so I've got h is equal to 50 times the square root of 3 feet. Okay, and guys, this is a number. All right, that's what that is. Square root of 3 is a number. All right. Okay, um, last one. It says a street sign is in the shape of an equilateral triangle. Okay, the height of the triangular sign is 20 inches. What are the length of one of the sides of the equilateral triangle? So here's what you have. You have a street sign that is an equilateral triangle. Okay, and what I know is that all three sides are congruent, all right? And I know that these are 60-degree angles, okay, all three of them. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it wants us to find the height, okay, the height from the very top down to the bottom. And then what that does is that creates a right angle here, okay? And what I know is that this is 20 inches, okay, this is 20 inches. And what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, what's this side length over here? Okay, so, you know, I'm going to put a question mark there. So now what I'm going to do is what I realize is I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle when I cut an equilateral triangle in half. Okay, so I'm going to call this S. I'm going to call this 2S. And I'm going to call this S times the square root of 3. So now what I know is I need to set up an equation and figure out what S is and then multiply it by 2 and plug it in here. So the equation I can write is S times the square root of 3 is equal to 20, all right? And I'm going to divide by the square root of 3 and divide by the square root of 3. So those divide out, okay? And I get that S is equal to 20 divided by the square root of 3, all right? Now, what I want to do is uh, rationalize my denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by my denominator, which is the square root of 3, okay? And so then what happens is, is I get S is equal to 20 times the square root of 3, all divided by 3, okay? And this is still just a number, okay? It's a decimal, but we want to write it like this because we're in high school and we're adults, okay? So, um, you know, and remember that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 just gives you 3, all right? So that's my value for S. But what I want to do is I want to multiply that by 2 to give me that side length. So what I'm going to do is multiply this by 2 and multiply this by 2. And when I do that uh, with a fraction, this is 2 over 1, okay? So when we do that, we're just going to multiply across and rock and roll. So then my side length, and I'm going to call that my side length that we're looking for, okay, is equal to 2 times 20, which is 40, times the square root of 3 all over 3. And that's my answer. Okay, so guys, I keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, set up that triangle, write in what I know, write in what I'm trying to find, and there we go. But it's important that we know how to do this, and make sure you write down all the steps, okay? Um, and that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. See you later. Bye!